Welcome into College Football Breakdown, where we bring in one of the best minds in the college football betting circle, Joe Lisi. Joe, how you doing today, buddy? Uh, looking forward to another great weekend of college football. Slow start to the season, but I'm looking forward to a great number week, week number five this coming uh, Friday and Saturday. Yeah, not that bad. One and two last week. Looks like seven and nine, if I'm not mistaken, on the season. So not all is lost, Joe. Bounce back mode. We got a Friday night game. Uh, two Saturday day games and then a Saturday night cap for you. We'll be going against the spread. Hopefully get Joe in the win column. So bounce back mode, Joe. Let's get right into it. Friday night action. We got a Big Ten matchup. We got Nebraska going on the road to Illinois. Looks like we got Bet Online hanging a minus six and a half. A minus seven with uh, plus juice at five dimes. That's towards the Cornhuskers laying the points on the road. 46 or 46 and a half as the total 46 and a half you can find at wager web joe how are you looking to bet this big 10 matchup yeah i like nebraska in this battle uh drew when you look at it overall over the last four meetings since 2012 nebraska's three and one over illinois and have won those games by 11 points per game i know tanner lee has not looked good in the new offense for mike riley seven touchdowns only nine interceptions has struggled with his reads and progressions but i still give the physicality to nebraska on the offensive defense alliance this is a team in Nebraska that's rushing the football for 154 yards on the ground and still throwing the football through the air with Tanner Lee. They have playmakers on the outside that can stretch Illinois' defense vertically. And when you look at Illinois' defense overall, entering this ball game, they're allowing opposing offenses to rush for 184 yards on the ground and allowing 50% of third down conversions to opposing offenses. I think that's the difference as well. When you look at the flip side for Illinois, they're struggling only passing for 179 yards per game with uh, Crouch and Jeff George Jr. Can't stretch defenses vertically, a one-dimensional offense that really can't run the football consistently. You look at the strength of Nebraska's defense, they're holding opposing offenses to 114 rushing yards per game and solid in third down defense, holding opposing offenses to 38% on third down conversions. I think they can make Illinois one dimensional. They can get some sacks. And I look for Nebraska to roll in this matchup. They had a lackluster effort against Rutgers at home. They won that matchup by 10 points. This is another Big Ten game. Mike Riley's on the hot seat. But let's keep in mind, so is Lovey Smith. Not a good effort last year. This team is in turmoil as well. I give the coaching edge to Mike Riley, and I think Nebraska dominates this matchup by 20 points or more Friday night. All right, Joe, no, good breakdown. And, and just to give you a little bit of pushback on Illinois, it's, it looks like Nebraska, it's a, it's a regular week of preparation, if not even a short week, if, if I'm not mistaken. But Illinois didn't play until the Friday before last against USF. I think they lost by, you know, mid-40s, and I believe they put up even 21 points. So with the extra preparation time and at home catching almost a touchdown, do you think that extra preparation could, could uh, really help Illinois here? Yeah, it could, but I look at this Illinois offense overall. Last year, they struggled stretching teams vertically. They only had 13 passing touchdowns in the 2016 season. Entering this ballgame, only two passing touchdowns. They're struggling in the early part of the year to stretch defensive secondaries vertically. I still give the speed advantage to Nebraska, and I look at that matchup against Rutgers. I mean, they were devastated by that home loss to Northern Illinois. They sort of walked through the motions. I think from the Vegas angle, a lot of people piled on Nebraska looking for a home blowout after that lackluster loss to Northern Illinois, but it, it, it's an emotional factor. They got through that ball game. They still got the W. Now they're refocused. They're, they're sitting right now at 2-2 two and two overall, another Big Ten game. I like the fact that they're on the road. I think they'll be up and focused into this ball game, and that's why I give the advantage to Mike Riley and the crew. I think they dominate from start to finish in this ball game. All right, Joe, on to the Saturday action. We got a 12 noon Eastern kick, 9 a.m. Pacific, an ACC matchup in Bobby Dodd Stadium, one of the more underrated stadiums in college football. We got UNC on the road against Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech opens minus six and a half, bet up to minus nine and a half, a total of 60. 
What do you think about this movement from six and a half to nine and a half? Do you agree with Georgia Tech getting bet, Joe? I do. There's a couple of factors why you're seeing the line move. Let's look at the series total. Over the last five games, North Carolina has won three of the last five and dominated this ball game last year in Chapel Hill by 28 points. That aside, North Carolina has major injuries heading into this ball game. One of them is wide receiver Austin Prohl. That'll put a lot of pressure on Chaz Surratt to really stretch Georgia Tech's defense vertically. When you look at Georgia Tech overall in this matchup, Drew, they're rushing for 393 rushing yards per game heading into this ball game. They dominated a solid defensive front in Pittsburgh, but it's not just the offense of Georgia Tech. On third down conversions, from an offensive perspective, Georgia Tech is converting 54% of their third downs, but they have one of the top ranked statistical defenses in college football, only allowing 264 total yards per game. They're holding opposing offenses to 164 passing yards per game, and more importantly, very solid in run support, giving up 100 rushing yards to opposing offenses. And their third down defense, to me, is critical in this ballgame. They're holding opposing offenses to 26% on third downs. When you look at North Carolina defensively, they're not good in run support. Support. They allowed 186 rushing yards to Duke last week. They had a 17-13 lead in the fourth quarter and lost that ball game by double digits. They gave up two late touchdowns in a rivalry game. They now go on the road. They're struggling in run support and are going to face the triple option. To me, that's the difference. I think Georgia Tech is the right side here. I think they win this ball game convincingly by 17 points or more Saturday afternoon. All right, Joe, so agreeing with this line movement here, betting Georgia Tech minus nine and a half right now. We also got a 139-140, a big 12 matchup, 330 Eastern uh, kickoff here. Baylor versus Kansas State. It looks like Kansas State's commanding a 17-point favorite role here. You can actually grab a 16 and a half at five dimes right now. And across the board, pretty much the total sitting at 59. How are you looking to bet this big 12 matchup, Joe? Yeah, I like the underdog here. I'm, I was very impressed the way Baylor played at home against Oklahoma and Baker Mayfield. This is a team that has struggled in the early part of the year with Matt Rule, a more physical head coach that predicates offensive line physicality and defensive line physicality from his days at Temple. Baylor was not built that way under Art Riles, a finesse offense and defense. You look at the matchup against Kansas State, they've won four of the last five over K-State by 14 points per game. They did lose this battle last year in Wake go 41 to 21 it was Zach Smith's first game as starting quarterback they had the lead early in the second quarter before Kansas State wore down the defensive front seven of uh, Baylor in that ball game but you look at Zach Smith overall he broke out last week he completed 66 percent of his passes 463 passing yards four touchdowns no interceptions that's the way you have to beat Kansas State is you have to challenge them vertically, jump up on them early, and force that offense out of their game plan of running the football. I'm not sold on the consistency of Jesse Ertz as a pocket quarterback. He's only completing 55% of his passes. And more importantly, I was not sold on Kansas State entering this year. Last year, I told you two weeks ago, they won nine games in 2016. That came against eight FBS opponents with a combined overall record of 39 and 60. I think Baylor has a speed advantage on the perimeter. I think they're in this game from start to finish. And I think Zach Smith is the right quarterback for Baylor moving forward. They showed me something last week, putting up over 450 yards of total offense on Oklahoma's defense. I think Baylor gets the upset win here, 44-30 to 30 over Kansas State this coming Saturday. All right, so like him close. And um, so, so taking Baylor plus the 17, right, Joe? Yeah, Baylor plus the 17. Okay, you can find 17 pretty much across the board right now. Moving on to the nightcap, we got Pac-12 action. The Colorado Buffaloes at the UCLA Bruins. Looks like UCLA commanding minus seven, minus seven and a half at bet online. 68, pretty much the total around the board. You can find some 68 and a halves. Joe, you went with the uh, Colorado Buffaloes last week. Are you going back to the well this week? 
I am. I, you know, when you look at the series matchup, they haven't fared well against UCLA. They're one in four over the last five meetings since 2012. And UCLA has won those four games by 14.2 points per game. But let's keep in mind, Colorado got this win last year in Boulder in a low scoring game, 20 to 10. They're still rushing the football with Philip Lindsay for 141 yards on the ground, passing for 272 through the air with Steven Montez. They did get blown out last week by Washington, 37 to 10. But that was a 17 to 10 ball game late in the third quarter before Montez threw a pick six in that ball game. There's a couple of factors about Colorado that I like heading into this ball game. Their third down offense, they're converting 43% of third downs and holding opposing offenses to 29% of the on their third down conversions. Secondary is solid. They're very good in man-to-man coverage. You saw that last week against Washington. They played very well, even though they gave up some big plays in the passing game. They were playing very well in man-to-man coverage at home. They go on the road now, and this is a UCLA team that has not played well in run support. They were tied 13 apiece in that ball game against Stanford. In the second half, they got worn out, Drew. They allowed 405 rushing yards to the Stanford Cardinal. Heading into this ball game overall, they're allowing 307 total rushing yards per game. This is a defense that's giving up 40% on third down conversions and enters this game minus five in turnover margin. To me, UCLA is going in the opposite direction. I'll take the more physical team, more blue-collar approach with Mike McIntyre and the crew. I think Colorado gets a seven-point victory over UCLA this coming weekend in the Rose Bowl. All right, so Joe going plus seven and a half on Colorado. You can get the seven and a hook at that online right now. Joe, just ask you a question on the UCLA defense compared to uh, – what, Colorado going up against the Washington defense last week. How would you compare the Husky defense to the Bruin defense? And do you think they're going to have a lot more success this week than they did last week? Oh, without a doubt. I mean, you're talking about a physicality on the on the offensive defense alliance by Colorado. Washington was one of the top defenses in college football last year. They lost three starters from that secondary, Buda Baker, King, and Jones. They were still entering that ball game last week, plus six in turnover margin. Last year, Washington was tops in turnover margin, tied with Western Michigan at plus 18. When you look at UCLA over the last couple of years now, they have not been solid in run support. In 2016, they were 0-5 every time they allowed a, a team to rush for over 195 yards on the ground, and they lost those games by 14.2 points per game. So again, if they can't stop the run consistently, Consistently, they have a tendency to lose ball games. They gave up 382 to Texas A&M, 281 to Hawaii. They gave up 160 to Memphis and still lost that game. This is a blue-collar team in Colorado. They're going to look to wear down UCLA on the road. They did it last year at home in Boulder. Expect the same type of approach. And if you're asking me apples to apples, I think the better team, the more complete team from top to bottom is the Colorado Buffaloes. I like it, Joe. You're getting the better coach team plus seven and the hook. This is a good game to use SBR odds and make sure you're getting the best of the number because there's a lot of sevens out there. And if you're looking to take Joe's advice, which I think I am betting the Colorado Buffaloes, you can get seven and the hook, the extra half a point there at some shops, including bet online right now on SBR odds. So make sure to check that out. We'll be back next week with Joe Lisi on more college football picks. Make sure to check him out at Go For The Two, his work at GoForTheTwo.com. I'm Drew Martin. This is College Football Breakdown. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to our channel. Now we've put a lot of work into producing all these free videos, so please help us out and keep all our content free for you forever by simply liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing. Now, not to mention a visit to our industry-leading website will warm the hearts of all our SBR employees, especially myself. Now, the links are over there to the left, uh, so do check those out. Thanks for watching.